do. Hey guys. Well, it's time for an update. So this is my uh, my work workspace right here. So yesterday I've built uh, six plasmids in total, but two of them, plasmid designation number three and number six, did not get assembled as uh, as planned, according to the to the restriction digest on the gel. So uh, I've decided to screen three more colonies from uh, plasmid number three and plasmid number six today. Once I mini prep this. I'm gonna screen them using the Diagnostic Digest and I'm pretty confident that this, uh, this time it will work. So these are the last two plasmids that I'm gonna build for, uh, for my project right now. And then I'm gonna test them in uh, probably HEC uh, 293 cells and HEC G2. But we'll see, I'll keep you updated on my progress and uh, but for now, let's uh, let's go to desktop and uh, tell you what I'm trying to accomplish and what I did until uh, until now. While my uh, my bacteria is incubating right now, let me uh, tell you a bit about this plasmid. So this was my first plasmid. This was the first plasmid that I uh, that I've built. Um, if you want to know how exactly. I've built it. I'm gonna show you a bit later my uh, my tiny article that I posted as a, as a preprint. So as you can see, this this plasmid right here, it has certain uh, certain regions. For example, this is the origin of replication. So this helps the plasmid get uh, multiplied in bacteria. Um, this uh, this gene, which is the ampicillin resistance gene, helps the plasmid. Um, get selected, right? Because you grow the bacteria with ampicillin and because the bacteria that contain these plasmids basically have a gene that degrades ampicillin, you can uh, select that. So if you don't want to know more about bacterial selection, there is a plenty, uh, plenty of info uh, out there. Okay, so another region, this is the CMV enhancer and promoter. So this helps this gene right here, which is the cycle 3 GS GFP, which is a green fluorescent protein, get expressed in mammalian cells, right? CMV is a, is a promoter uh, derived from, the, uh, from a virus, but it also works in, in mammalian cells. Um, this, uh, this one right here is another region. Basically what this does, it, it helps uh, your plasmid um, get maintained as a chromosome in the mammalian cell and of course this is the the terminator or the polyadenylation signal so in order for the for the mammalian cells to make this protein right here they need a promoter and they need a terminator right this so this is how transcription works. Uh, transcription factors bind to the promoter and the, termina the terminator basically uh, tells the, um, the uh, RNA polymerase where to unbind and so on. Um, this would be a, a gene which has of course a start codon, right, and a stop codon. So this is for translation. Okay, so what I'm basically trying to accomplish because um, getting your plasmid into a, into a mammalian cell is one thing, but in order for the mammalian cell, right, to, uh, to make this protein as good as possible, you need to optimize this vector because, so a cell will do GFP, right, so will synthesize GFP. However, if you change the promoter region and the polyadenylation site right here, it can make more uh, more um, fluorescent protein, less fluorescent protein. So it the 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 expression depends very much on the um, on the stuff that you have here in your plasmid, right? So let me give me give you an example and tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Right. So these are the prepped plasmids, as you can see. Now, 
I'll do a digest and uh, I'm gonna put them on a gel to see to see if uh, they're the ones I really want. So this is the article I've uh, the tiny article I've uh, I've wrote, right? Um, regarding the expression, let's go to the to a graph right here, and uh, I'll explain uh, to you in uh, in detail what I'm talking about. So. <clears throat> I have two different sets of data right here. One of them is transfection efficiency. So if you have a plasmid with a GFP gene in it and you insert them in some mammalian cells, for example, I've inserted them in HEC 293, that's what uh, they're called. The cells are derived from, uh, from kidney cells. Uh, so if you transfect them, you get a certain transfection efficiency because they will not all get transfected. And the transfection efficiency also depends on the, the regulator regions in your plasmid, on the promoter, on the terminator, on the size of the plasmid, and so on. So that's why uh, you need to optimize. So for example, uh, here I have built like seven plasmids. They are all the same except for, uh, for two things, the promoter region and the terminator region. So basically what I do, did is uh, I did seven plasmids and of course I, uh, did, sev uh, I did several combinations of a promoter and a terminator. For example, this one, this plasmid right here, which has a transfection efficiency of about 30%. So that means that 30% of the entire cell population that uh, I analyzed are green, so are transfected and are making green fluorescent protein. So this plasmid right here has the uh, EF1A promoter and the SV40 terminator. This one right here with red has the F -A -F, um, EF1A promoter and the BGH terminator. This one in a yellow has the F, uh, EF1A promoter and the BGA terminator and so on. Um, this one right here, for example, has the CMV promoter and the BGH terminator. Of course, this one right here has the SV40 promoter, BGH terminator, and so on. Uh, interestingly, in these types of cell, because, um, you know, transfection efficiency and, of course, gene expression also depends on the, the cells that you're using, right? So uh, you'll get a transfection efficiency and, of course, a, a gene expression in uh, HEC 293 cells, which is absolutely different from the expression and the transfection efficiency you'll get in uh, your, I don't know, liver cells, for example, using the same exact vector. Okay, so this, uh, these are steps that basically need to be, need to be optimized. So this is the transfection efficiency, but let me show you what happens when you transfect them and basically you measure the green fluorescent intensity uh, of the cells that were transfected using a flow cytometer. So as you can see here, I have four plasmids because uh, I decided not to measure these ones right here because they basically gave absolutely no expression, right? So these four plasmids this is the EF1A with the SV40 promoter, right? The, the orange one, for example, is the EF1A with the BGH, black EF1A BGA, and the yellow is CMV promoter and BGH terminator. So that's why I'm trying to show you that, that expression will vary according to the different uh, promoter and terminators you're going to use in your plasmid, right? So as you can see here, First measurement was done at uh, 27 hours post-transfection. So I transfected the cells, waited for 27 hours, then I put them into the flow cell cytometer. So this is the median fluorescence intensity. What this basically tells you is the, um, the fluorescence expression per cell, if you want. It's, it does uh, some kind of, uh, of median, right? Uh, as you can see here, at 27 hours, the best expression was provided by this one right here. So by the AF1A SV40 plasmid with a um, median fluorescence intensity of about 50,000, right? 
The next one was the orange one, black one, and the least expression was given by the CMV plasmid, the plasmid with the CMV promoter. So remember, all plasmids are absolutely the same, just the, the two regions differ, the promoter and the terminator for the GFP gene. At 48 hours post-transfection, you can see this, uh, that this, uh, the expression given by this plasmid right here, by the EF1A SV40, started to decline. However, you can see how this, uh, these two plasmids, the orange and the black one, peaked, right? You can see how, how the fluorescence intensity like skyrocketed right here. After about 147 hours, of course, the expression started to decline because I did not make stable cells, okay? So it's, it's a bit complicated, but you can see by the graph right here, plasmid started to decline, and then at about 247 hours, which is like 20 generation of cells, uh, they all started to decline dramatically. So that's what I'm interested here right now. So in order to get a, the best expression in HEC293 cells, for example, you need to optimize the promoter and the terminator region. So my main goal right here is, uh, right now, is build the plasmids as cheaply and as easy as possible. Uh, in total, right now, I have 21 plasmids to test. I want to see this graph, okay, optimized using different regions of the plasmid in some kind of cells. Because when you transfect, whether you do it in vivo or in cells, you need the best expression possible. So that's what, what I'm trying to do, uh, to do right now. Um, as I told you, I have just two more plasmids to, uh, to build and screen. Then I'm going to test them in, uh, in some hepat hep hepatic cells. Uh, these are not primary cells. These are like uh, immortalized cells. So this is an immortalized cell line. But whatever, maybe I can publish an article based on, this, uh, on the data that I'll get. And uh, probably in the future, I'll just use the vectors that, uh, or the plasmids that give the best expression in some kind of cells to uh, to do some testing in vivo or in other cell lines and uh, and so on. So the, the the main purpose of my work right now is to optimize the vector that I'm using for best expression by switching uh, some regions from uh, from it. I don't know if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to to leave them in the comments. But basically, this is what I'm working uh, on right now. And all the techniques I'm using, right, are basically um, explained in other videos like transformations and, uh, you know, cloning and uh, restriction digest, PCR and so on. Okay, so have a nice one and please like and subscribe if, uh, if you want to see more and, uh, you know, check the notification, notification bell if you want to get updated on what, uh, what I'm doing.